everyone, welcome to another Procreate tutorial. This is the drawing that we'll be completing in today's video, this fun birds in the night sky drawing. So it's a lot of fun. We will draw like the background and the moon and the clouds, then the trees are a ton of fun to draw. And then the birds is actually just a picture that you'll import and then we'll add like the highlight details to them after we kind of move them around and place them where we want. And then we'll finish it off with the stars. So if you are new here, I mainly post Procreate tutorials. If that is something you're interested in, go ahead and subscribe. I also offer extra tutorials over on Patreon. So that's linked in the description below. If you sign up there, you'll get access to exclusive tutorials every month, plus sneak peeks of what I'm posting on YouTube here. So here are some of the things that we've been drawing recently. So again, check that out if you would like to. So before we get started on today's video, the only thing that you will need to do is download the color palette and the birds picture to import later. So they're both linked in the description below. They're totally free to download. For the color palette, just save the file to your iPad and then either double tap it or click on it and click open in Procreate and it will automatically import the color palette into Procreate so that you can use the same colors as you follow along with the video today. And then for the birds picture, just save that to your files so that it saves as a PNG with a transparent background. So save that to the files on your iPad and we will import that later. I will show you how to do that. I will also post the canvas dimensions, color profile, and layers needed on the screen here and in the description below so that you can use those to set up your canvas. So take a minute to get everything ready and then come back and we'll get started. Okay, this is the color palette that we will be working with today. So let's just go ahead and get started. We're going to first create our background, our kind of blue sky. It's going to have a little bit of like variance to it, kind of like some streaks through the sky. So let's just go ahead and start that on layer one. We'll grab our first color on the first row of the color palette and drag and drop it onto our canvas to fill the whole screen. And I'm going to zoom out a little bit. And on this same layer, we are just going to switch to our second color on the top row. And the brush that we're going to use to create our background is going to be the soft brush under the airbrushing category. Find that. I'm going to have my opacity for the brush set to like 50 and my size set to maybe 15 or so. And I'm just going to kind of start and create like kind of a diagonal line, maybe a little curvy even through the like top part of the sky here. Pick my brush up a couple times to kind of deepen it in the center a little bit but let it fade out nicely on the edges. Then kind of same thing through the bottom here. I'll create like another one. Again, just kind of at a diagonal, maybe a little curvy. Maybe I'll have it get like wider on the right side. Something like this. So we just have some good variance through our sky. Like so. If yours looks choppy at all, we can go ahead and blur it a little bit to kind of smooth it out. So to do that, we would go to our wand icon, Gaussian blur, and drag that up a little bit to like 20 to 25%, just to kind of blend everything together a little bit better. So do that if you wish to. And now we can go ahead and move on. Let's just go ahead and draw our moon first. So on our layer menu, let's add a new layer above this one and grab the next color in line, third one on the top row, and this will be our first moon color. We'll grab our monoline brush under the calligraphy tab, opacity of the brush set to 100, our size set to maybe 30, and in kind of like the top right corner here, I'm just gonna make a perfect circle. A good size, hold it down until it turns perfectly smooth, and then touch your finger on the screen to make it a perfect circle. Don't let it go off the edge just yet. We are going to move it off the edge, but maybe just set a good size like this for now. Go ahead and fill that in. And then if you need to, you can adjust it with your arrow tool on uniform. You can adjust the size a little bit. Okay, so this is what mine looks like now, and now we're going to move it up. So with our arrow tool, let's go ahead and just move it up a little ways. So I'm a little ways from the top right corner, and then I'm letting it go off the top edge till we're maybe a little bit above halfway. So like these two blue dots in the middle here is like my halfway mark. 
So I'm going to do like a little bit above that. So I'm not quite going all the way to those blue dots, but maybe a little bit further down. Again, a little room on the right edge. And that's where I'm going to leave it. Now let's add some details to it. So on our layer menu, click on this layer and turn on alpha lock. Grab our next color in line, fourth one on the top row, and switch back to our soft brush again under the airbrushing category, same one we were using before. Same opacity at like 50%, and let's lower our size a little bit to maybe 5% or so. And we're gonna kind of just create some blobs with this darker color now. So I'm just gonna start towards the center and kind of start making some kind of blobby areas, just working in like a circular motion, leaving some light color showing in the background still here and there, like so. Then I'll go back in and just kind of deepen some of it up. So I'll pick my brush up and just kind of go back through, create a little bit more variation in some spots, but pretty simple overall like this. Okay, same layer, same brush. We're just gonna switch our color to the fifth one on the top row, now the really light one. And this is going to be kind of like a highlight around the edge. So I'm just gonna go right near the edge and start pushing down with this to get some lightness going there. All the way around, pick your brush up a couple times to really brighten it up. Should it look something like this? Okay, and then we're going to get even lighter still. So to do that, we'll go to our layer menu, add a layer above this layer, click on it and set it to a clipping mask, and then click the N and set it to add. Okay, and we're going to go back to our base color, the third one on the top row, and the brush. Now we're going to switch for the first time to our turpentine brush, which we're going to use quite a bit today. So this is going to add some good texture to everything. So that's going to be under the painting category, the turpentine brush. I have the opacity set to like 60 and the size set to maybe 10. And I'm just going to go around again on the edges kind of and lightly just follow this kind of shape. So we get some kind of streaky texture to the edges and it also kind of brightens it up a little bit. Then I'm just going to very lightly kind of through the center add some of this as well. So very, very lightly in that same kind of circular motion. Awesome. Lastly, for our moon, we need a glow around it. So to do that, we'll go to our layer menu, make a duplicate of our base layer here that is set to alpha lock. So slide to the left on that and hit duplicate. Grab the bottom one. Grab our lightest color now, fifth one on the top row. Go back to our layer menu and on this bottom layer with alpha lock turned on, click on it and click fill layer. And you'll see that layer fill in with that color. You won't see it on your canvas because it's behind this other one that's colored in, but you'll see it on your layer menu. Click on that layer and turn off alpha lock so that we can blur the edges. And then we're going to go to our wand icon, Gaussian blur, and drag this up a good ways to maybe 30% or so. Okay, and then that is it for our moon up there. Now we will go to our layer menu and add our clouds next. So to do that, let's add a layer above everything that we have so far. Okay, same thing. We're gonna start with our monoline brush and then we'll kind of add some variance and texture from there. So we're going to grab the first color on the second row of the color palette. Grab our monoline brush under the calligraphy tab, opacity at 100, size at 30. I'm going to start a little ways from my moon here, maybe right about here, like a little over halfway across the screen, so maybe right here. And I'm going to first make a horizontal line for the bottom of this first cloud. So I'm gonna go straight to the left, all the way off the canvas, hold it down until it turns perfectly straight, and then touch your finger on the screen to make it perfectly horizontal, and let that go. Okay. Now from here, we're going to make some curves to make the top of our cloud. So starting from this front point here, I am going to just use my pen and make a slight curve towards the back, hold it down till it turns perfectly smooth. Click this edit arc button at the top if you want to adjust it at all. So I'm just gonna kind of go off of there, make another one, hold it down, 
Okay, then we'll maybe do another one off of there. Pretty rounded at the top. Hold that down. Edit that if you need to. You can kind of move them around. And then I'll maybe do a small one going off the edge. And then that's my first cloud shape, so I'm going to fill that in. Okay, now on our layer menu, let's go ahead and just make a duplicate of this one. So I'll slide to the left and hit duplicate. Grab the one on top. Grab it with our arrow tool on uniform. I'm going to downsize it a little bit and then drag it down and to the left as well. So they're going to just overlap a little bit here like so. So this one's on top. They're the same color right now, but we'll see their distinction once we're done with them. So we'll place this one about here. Okay. Now on our layer menu, let's turn this top one off so that we can just work on our back cloud. So our bottom cloud layer, we're not going to turn on alpha lock because we want some good texture around the edges. So we're just going to leave it as is for now. Let's use the same color that we have and go to our turpentine brush again under the painting category. We'll increase our opacity of the brush up to 100, but we'll leave our size at like 10%. And first I'm just going to kind of go across the bottom to kind of rough this up. So I'm working mostly horizontally. But since it's a cloud, we don't want the edges to be so perfect. So then I'm going to kind of follow the curves as well. Kind of rough those up also. Something like this to start. And now we can start adding in some different colors. So same layer, we're not going to turn on alpha lock. Grab our next color, the second one on the second row. So this is kind of our darkest color, so it's going to be kind of a shadow. So I'm going to go kind of across the bottom with this, lay it in there with this brush, kind of streak it through a little bit like so. So we'll just do that to start. We'll probably add some more soon. And now we're going to use more of like some highlight colors. So let's switch to our third color on the second row. And this one's kind of just a medium color. We're just going to kind of work this in. Maybe kind of start following some of our curvy shapes, some straight as well, but just to kind of add some more variation in to start. Then our next color, fourth one on the second row. And let's go ahead and maybe lower our brush size a little bit to like 5% for this. And this is where we'll start and it's kind of more of a highlight. So I'm going to start kind of towards the tops of my cloud here like the tops of these curves and really kind of start following them. Maybe kind of bringing them down on the front side or, you know, the right side closer to the moon where they would kind of hit. Maybe even a little bit kind of horizontally throughout as well, kind of spread that through. Again, just to add kind of some more variation. Okay, and then we have a lighter color, still fifth one on the second row, and we're gonna kind of do the same thing, add in some more of this really bright color. Again, mainly to just kind of where we added it before, just like on the farthest side. Kind of work that in. Okay. We'll just kind of work it in some other spots too, pretty lightly, like so. Okay, and then we'll do even just one more brightest color, these third one on the top row. Same thing, and we'll just kind of work this in right on the edges to really brighten them up pretty lightly. Lower the opacity of your brush if you feel like you need to, if that's helpful to you. But we want some really good kind of brightness coming in. I might even add like another curve kind of like right here with this, just kind of a quick curve. I can start another one there. Something like that. Okay. Then go back through with any of your other colors. I might kind of go back in with these lighter ones and add to this one a little bit here that I threw in. Something kind of like that. And then most importantly, we do want to go back in with our darkest color again, the second one on the second row, and kind of go back through and add some more of this here and there, like under some of the curves, maybe a little like straight 
lines through as well, just to really add some more kind of variation through the cloud like so. Okay, and then very, very lastly, we're going to add one more detail. So we're going to use our lightest color, the fifth one on the top row. We're going to switch our brush to the dry ink brush under the inking category. My opacity for the brush is at 100. My size is at maybe 10 to 15, depending on kind of how hard you push down. You want some pretty light lines. But I'm going to go through and just add some quick lines kind of to the edges of our clouds here, kind of just throughout to add like a little bit more detail, a little bit more kind of highlight and structure to them. Something like this. Okay, that looks great for my first cloud. So now we're going to go through and do the same thing to our other one. So I'm just gonna go and turn this one off on our layer menu. I'm gonna turn my other one on, the smaller one, and we'll just do the same thing. So be on that layer. Let's grab our base color again and go back to our turpentine brush at like 10% to add our edges. So I'll just go through and rough those up a little bit like we did before. Okay. Then all the other same things as well. So let's go to our darker color now, second one on the second row. And again, we'll kind of add that mostly like through the bottom for now. Okay, next color, third one on the second row. This is just kind of an all throughout kind of just middle color. Just kind of give some more variation. Then our next color fourth on the second row is pretty light. We're going to add that kind of as more of a highlight towards the tops of our um, bumps, like in the right side where our sun's hitting or our moon is hitting like this. Okay, next color, fifth one on the second row, same thing, kind of brighten those up. We can potentially lower our brush a little bit maybe to like five, and I'll even maybe add another one like right here, kind of like we did before, but in a different spot. Then I'll add some colors around that as well. Okay, and then lastly, our third color on the top row to really add a really, really bright edge to these. Pretty lightly throughout. Okay, and now we can go back in with like our darker color, our second one on the second row, or any other colors back through to kind of add some more just variation to our colors that we have going on here. So feel free to do so. And then lastly, we'll switch to our fifth color on the top row and switch to our dry ink brush again to add our quick little lines to kind of finish this off. So something like this, feel free to do anything else. And then we can go ahead and turn our other cloud back on, on our layer menu. And we should have our two clouds like so. Okay, next up is going to be our trees. We're going to do a pretty similar thing there as well. So on our layer menu, let's add a layer to the very top and grab our first tree color, which is our first color on the last row of the color palette. Let's go ahead and grab our monoline brush under the calligraphy tab. The first thing we're going to do is make some guides for us. So 
Our first tree, let's say, starts maybe right about here, closer to the right side, pretty tall, like right in between like our moon, our clouds, and the edge of our screen. So maybe right about here I'll start it. This will be the top of it. I'm going to draw a perfectly vertical line. Hold it down till it turns perfectly straight. Touch your finger on the screen to make it perfectly vertical. Okay, we're going to start at that same top point and we're going to make like two side lines. So at the top point, go to the left a little bit, hold it down, touch your finger on the screen till it hits this angle. So my angle is one from vertical. So if this is vertical, if I snap to the left one, this is the angle that I get. And then you can click this line button at the top to kind of move it around just to make it meet at the top nicely. Okay, we're going to do the same thing now to the other side. So starting at that same point, off to the right, snap to that same angle, move the line if you need to. Then we're going to start maybe a third of the way down or so, or a fourth of the way down, somewhere around there, a little ways from the top. And we're going to draw a horizontal line across. So horizontal line, hold it down, touch your finger to the screen. This is just a guide. It doesn't have to be super perfect, but something like that. So that's going to be kind of our first tree piece. Then we'll go down quite a ways maybe here and make another one. Hold it down, touch your finger to the screen. Go down a little ways maybe here, make another one touch your finger to the screen. Okay, so this is our tree guide. Let's go ahead and just make a duplicate of this. So go to our layer menu, slide to the left and hit duplicate, grab your arrow tool on uniform, and we're gonna downsize it a good ways and kind of plop it on over here, maybe underneath our cloud, closer to the left side of the screen maybe about halfway up so you can you can downsize it a little bit but we don't want to like downsize it all the way to like here you know we just want to downsize it a good amount and then for the most part we'll also just drag it lower so then our guides will kind of cut off but that's okay so maybe our next tree will be about here okay layer menu let's make a duplicate of this layer because our next one's going to be smaller still so slide to the left and hit duplicate arrow tool maybe downsize it a smidge, and then mostly again, drag it down a little bit. So maybe these ones will overlap, something like this. So those are our trees. That's how we're going to place them. So once you like the way that those are all positioned, let's go to our layer menu and snap these three layers together. So snap them all on one layer, click the end on this layer to open up our options, and we're gonna drag the opacity down a bit to maybe 20 to 25% somewhere in there so we can still see them a little bit. Let's add a new layer on top of this one and we'll start our first tree. So same monoline brush, same 30%. We're going to start on this right tree, our biggest one, and work on that. So essentially, each one of these is like a different section of our tree. So let's start at the top. I'm going to start at the very tippy top of this. It doesn't have to be perfectly on it. This is just a guide. So I'm going to start roughly here though and make a kind of slightly curved line. Hold it down. And then it's going to kind of hit that spot where our lines meet there. Same thing on the other side, kind of curve line, hold it down, something like this to start our top piece. Okay, then from there, I'm going to kind of come in, fluff out, same thing kind of here. So this is like the top tree part. If we need to fix this top at all with our eraser also on our monoline brush, we can do that. Just kind of fix that up at the top. It doesn't have to be anything too perfect, but maybe something a little cleaner than it was. Okay, and then this is our first section. So let's go ahead and just fill that in. Then we're going to go to our layer menu, add a new layer below the layer that we just created. Okay, so now we're going to start maybe like halfway through this section and do our next one. So we'll start halfway through our top one and draw to this line where these intersect. So I'll start right about here. And this time we don't have to worry about the top as much because it's being covered up by this. But another curved line, kind of hold it down here. If it turns into a perfectly straight line, you might be able to click this line button at the top and set it to arc instead. If it doesn't give you that option, just try redrawing it closer to an arc. But we don't want it to be too, like, wavy. But just something like this. Okay, start at that same point. Another kind of curvy line. And then the same thing, we'll kind of connect them across the bottom by going like this throughout till we get back to the beginning. Something like this. Connect that there nicely. Make sure it's connected across the top here. You know, make sure your lines come together there. Kind of just fill that in. 
so we can fill this section in. Okay, layer menu, another new layer underneath the one we were just on. Same thing, now we're gonna start halfway through this section roughly and draw to our next line, a nice curved line if it gives you the arc option. Start at that same point to our next one, curved. Okay, and then same thing, we'll draw a bunch of curvy lines until we get to the other side. Kind of always just curving in that direction. So then in the center, I kind of went like straight down, but then always curving out further as we get further to the edges. Again, make sure that's nice and connected at the top and then fill that section in. Then we have one more. So layer menu, add a layer below this one. And we can't really see much of it, but let's just kind of start roughly in the middle of this Pretend that we're like curving down to something down here. Start at that same point, pretend we're curving down to something down here. And then again, make sure that's connected across the top and fill in that little bottom piece that we have. Okay, so this is our first tree. So we kept them separate so that we can add some highlights and stuff to them. But essentially, if you want to, you can make a duplicate of this for the other ones or we can draw them separately. I intended to draw them separately so they're all a little bit unique, but if you wanna make duplicates of this one, you can. So you can go to your layer menu, you can select one layer, slide right on the other ones to select them all and hit group. We're gonna do that anyway, just to keep them kind of separate. So this is our first tree. If you want to use duplicates of this one, you just need to go to this top group layer, slide to the left and hit duplicate, and then that'll duplicate it and you can Select it with your arrow and drag the whole thing over, resize it, and place it here. You can totally do that if you would like to. I am going to do them separately. So I'm going to get rid of that and just add a new layer for our next tree. Do whichever you prefer. If you want to, you can skip past all this to this timestamp here where we go through and start texturizing them and stuff. Okay, but next one, if you're following along, we'll start here. We'll make our first kind of curved line. Hold that down. Curved line. Hold that down, hopefully get an arc option. And then again, clean up the top a little bit. Okay. And then do our quick little fun lines to connect it and fill it in. Layer menu, new layer below this one. Same thing, starting in the middle point, curve to the next one, arc. Curve to the next one. Bring them together. And fill it in. Okay, and then another new layer underneath that one for our next one. Same thing, we'll just start right about here and kind of go through like this. Arc that down to where that would probably be. Same thing on this side. And then just make sure it's connected at the top and fill it in. If you have more, if you have, if you hit your other line and you can like do your little go across, go ahead and do so, but I don't have that. It's a little too low. So I'll just fill that part in there and move on. So that is our second tree. So I'm going to go ahead and group these layers together on the layer menu again. Okay. And then let's go ahead and add a new layer at the top for our last tree to start. So same thing. We'll start with our top one. Quick curved line, curved line, fix it at the top if you need to, but that one looks okay for me. Go across the top, fill that in. Layer menu, a new layer below that one. Same thing. Fill that in, layer menu, new layer below that one. For our very last piece here, set it to an arc. Set it to an arc, uh, connect it across the top and fill it in. And now we have those ones. So I will again group those together so that everything's in a group. So we have our three trees here. So now we can go ahead and start texturing them and stuff. So essentially we just wanna add a little bit of texture and a medium color and then a little bit of a highlight as well. So on our layer menu, let's go back to our first tree, which should be our bottom group. 
and we'll start on our top layer. Let's just go ahead and click on each of these and set them to alpha lock. So click on this one, alpha lock, the next one, alpha lock, the next one, alpha lock, the next one, alpha lock. So then let's go back to our top one and we work from the top down. So this is our top layer, the top piece of our tree. So we're going to switch to our next color line, second one on the bottom row, and switch back to our turpentine brush under the painting category. Our opacity is still gonna be at 100 and our size is going to be really low at like five. So this sem somewhat lighter color is going to stick to like the tops and middle pieces. So we're just gonna add this in as like a quick little texture throughout, just kind of following our trees, but like leaving kind of the bottom portions untouched or like the in-between of our branches. So like where this crevice is on each one. Okay, then let's switch to our next color, third one on the bottom row. And this is more of like our highlight. So I'm just gonna stick this kind of towards the tops of the tree itself and maybe through the branches just a little tiny bit, but nothing too crazy. Beautiful. Okay, next layer down, grab our middle color again, second one on the bottom row, same brush and everything. Okay, and we do want like a little bit of a shadow underneath where these are, so I'll leave that kind of dark there. Start a little bit lower than that and start in with this kind of me middle medium color. And again, go through like following my branch pieces. Um, it might be kind of hard to see where these ones are in the middle till you start drawing down here. But if you need to, you can go through and turn off your next layer so you can see them better. That's totally fine as well. Okay, then our lightest color, third one on the bottom row, same thing. We'll just kind of stick to the tips and the edges. Get some kind of highlight going through there, like this. Okay, turn on our next layer. I'll turn off my bottom layer, be on this middle third layer, and go back to our medium color. Same thing, leave a little bit of like a shadow there and start working in this medium color, just kind of following the branches. Okay, then our lighter color, sticking to the edges and the tips. And then turn on our last layer and be on that layer with our medium color again. And we can't see much of it, so I'm just going to kind of touch this in just a little bit here and there so that we can see it a little bit. So now it should look something like this. Okay, then we're just going to do that again for the other one. So I'm just going to minimize this group. We're done with it. Go to our next one. I'm going to turn alpha lock on on each one. And this is my far left tree. So I'm going to start on the top one again. I'm going to turn off my middle and bottom layer. Just have our top one on and ready to go. Let's grab our medium color. We're already on it, but... And then we'll again start kind of at the top and go through these, leaving a little bit of darkness still in between this little kind of middle section. Then grab our lighter color and do the tops and the edges. Okay, then we'll turn on our next one, be on that layer, grab our midi medium color again, and do the same thing that we were doing before. Okay, lighter color. And our last layer, turn it on and be on that one. Grab our medium color, go through that quite a ways. And I'll just kind of pretend that there are some branches down here that we would maybe start seeing some of the structure to. So then I'll grab my lighter color and kind of go around the edge towards the bottom here. And then yeah, I just kind of work my way up here and there as if there are some branches kind of coming up through there like that. Okay, 
So then we just have our last tree. Let's go ahead and uh, minimize the group that we were just in and turn alpha lock on on all these layers. Again, turn off our bottom two, be on our top one, grab our medium color, same thing, start at the top, through the middle and the edges, be on our lighter color, highlight those up a little bit. Turn on our next layer and be on it. Grab our medium color, second one on the bottom row. Same thing. And our lighter color. And our last layer, turn that on, be on it, grab our medium color again, and kind of same thing, we'll work this way up if we can see it, yours might look different, and then if we can do a little bit of our lighter color as well, we will, so just maybe a little bit on the edges and then coming up here and there through that bottom area. Okay, and then that is it for our trees. And then we're just going to add the teeniest bit more of a highlight to all of them. So now we're gonna start saving some layers. So let's go back to our layer menu and we are just going to flatten all of our trees together now. So if you like the way everything's looking, we are going to start at the top group and flatten all the way through our three groups. So they're all on one layer. Let's go ahead and get rid of our little guideline layer. And add a new layer on top of our tree layer now. Click on it and set it to a clipping mask. Grab our fifth color on the second row. And let's go ahead and just stay on our same turpentine brush. And we're just going to go through and lightly add just a little bit more of a highlight through some areas where our moon might be touching. So like on my right tree here, I'm going to focus kind of on like the top and right side a little bit. Kind of going through some of this as well, pretty lightly. Lower your size if you need to. But again, just kind of picking a few areas to focus this on. Nothing too crazy, just the little edges that the moon might be touching a little bit more. Same thing on our other trees here. So like I'll kind of do like the right side of these since that's closer to where the moon is. But again, just very, very briefly, nothing too crazy. So something kind of like that maybe is all. Next up, let's go ahead and add our birds. So now we're going to import the file that you should have downloaded. So let's go to our layer menu. I'm going to add a new layer. Click the gear icon, click add, click insert a file and find that where you downloaded it and it should import as like a PNG. So it should look something like this. Okay, now we're going to place them. So I'm just gonna place this like maybe here where I want like this bird to be. So this top right bird, and then we can move the others. So let's grab our selection tool on a freehand, make sure color fills turned off. And then we can just select around this next one, grab it with our arrow tool and we can kind of move it. So I might move this one like here. Then we can grab our selection tool, select around this other one and we can kind of move it also. So you can put it like here or you can put it down here. Maybe I'll do it like down here. So move them around however you see fit, whatever works for your picture. And then we will go ahead and add some quick details to them. So on our layer menu, so add a new layer above this one, click on it and set it to a clipping mask. Grab the fifth color on the top row of the color palette, really light, and grab our dry ink brush again under the inking category. Opacity still at 100, size at like 10. And we are again just going to kind of pick some highlight pieces that are reflecting off of our moon. So I'm gonna start with my right bird here and the moon's right above him. So I'm just gonna kind of go maybe all along its back pretty lightly and the top of its head. And we will lower the opacity of this in a moment, but we just wanna get a good highlight going. And then maybe maybe a little bit like a, along its wing here and there, just on the very edges. Okay, next bird, we'll kind of do the same thing. So I'll pick like this top 
and right side of this wing, maybe the top part of this wing a little bit. Okay, maybe like the top of his tail towards the back and then across its head a little bit also. So I'm gonna start on the front of its like beak, go around the top of its head and then kind of into the body a little bit and then let that like fade out. So something like that. And then our last one down here, kind of same thing. Let's start with its head, across the top of its head and kind of down its back a little bit, maybe across the top of its tail a little bit here and there. And then the top of its wings, maybe the front side as well, since the moon's up there, maybe a little bit across the top of this one. Something kind of like that. So do a little bit of that for each bird. And then again, we can lower the opacity of this layer just a little bit. So on our layer menu, click the end on this layer and drag the opacity down to maybe like 70%. I think that looks nice. So that is it for our birds really quick. Lastly, we just need the stars. So to do that, we'll go to our layer menu. We're actually gonna add these behind everything. So right above our layer one. Same color, we're gonna be on the fifth one on the top row. And we are going to switch to the soft airbrush under the airbrushing category. Not the one that we were using before, but the really small one down here. Okay, let's set our size to like 25%. Our opacity is at 100. And we're going to make a few stars with this size. So I'm going to pick a spot and just start pushing and push down pretty hard and you get a pretty big blob. Maybe something like this. So don't push down all the way, but just push down good enough to where you get like a good size star with some blurry edges. like so. So a few of those, then let's lower our brush size to like 10% and do some more at some smaller sizes. So I'll push down pretty hard to get some and then I'll do like even just the tiniest little tap for some others. Now we're just going to do this all over. Maybe until we have something like this. Now we need a glow around them. So on our layer menu, make a duplicate of this star layer. So slide to left and hit duplicate. Grab the bottom one. Click our wand icon, Gaussian blur, and we'll drag this up just a little bit to maybe like 10%. Okay. And then we're going to add just a tiny twinkle to some of them. So on our layer menu, let's add a layer above our main stars layer. Same color, switch our brush to the flare brush under the luminance category. And set our size to maybe 5%, our opacity is at 100. And we'll just go through and we'll just tap on a couple stars with this to add a little twinkle to them. Just a few, I'll kind of tilt my canvas a little in, on some to change like the direction of the flare. But yeah, well, maybe just do, I just picked like four of them. So once that's done, that completes our drawing today. So I hope that you had fun. I hope that you like the way that yours turned out. I hope that you maybe learned something new. This is my first time ever making trees like this and I love the way that they turned out. So you'll probably see more trees like this from me in the future. I'm a big tree fan of all different ways and shapes and sizes and ways to make them. So if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so that you can see more tutorials from me in the future. And if you would like to share your drawing on Instagram, I would love to see it. So go ahead and post it there and then tag me so that I can check it out. And while you're there, go ahead and give me a follow so that you can see what I'm working on next. Thanks for watching.